The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Caitlin with Flux here. Thanks so much for joining me today in our training on the basic functionality of the Form Builder. This training is an overview on the features of the Form Builder. We'll also be defining some commonly used Flux Form Builder specific vocabulary along the way. If you should have any questions at any time during the webinar, please go ahead and type these into the questions section. We'll be dedicating the last 30 minutes for questions and answers, so we'll be saving all of your questions for then. If we do not get to your question in time, we'll try to curate those and answer them offline in an extended Q&A. So, let's go ahead and get started. In this Flux 101 Builder webinar, we'll be answering the following questions. What are model types and where are they located in the Builder? What is a theme and what are the advanced and program settings? Where do I set up home pages for the portals, such as the grantee portal and the reviewer portal? What are the differences between the preview and builder modes? And what are the basic elements that make up a form? As I said earlier, we'll make sure to have that Q&A after the overview. So let's go ahead and get started with the first question. So what are model types and where are they located in the builder? First. I'd like to let you know that this is for users with administrator level access to Flux. So we'll go ahead and access our admin panel. You can do this by going up to the cog wheel on your dashboard up to the top right and clicking on admin. Alrighty. Now we are in the admin panel. So here you'll see there are two columns over to the left. Let's go over this first one over here. This first column will allow you to access all administrative tasks that have to do with your Flux site, from forms to global settings. This is where all settings and configuration takes place. So let's go ahead and enter forms. Now let's go ahead and look at this second column. This second column we see here displays all of the model types available to you. As a reminder, model types designate which segment of your site's data we are accessing. And this spans from grant requests, grants, reports, payments, and more. These are the standard model types that are cons consistent across all Flux client sites, as you can see here. And there are some dynamic ones. Model types are also called cards since they appear in a card format on your Flux dashboard. So let's go ahead and select the grant request model type. Now notice that the grant request model type is expanded into these tabs. This will appear for all model types depending on how many forms you or other administrators build for each. Let me go ahead and define some essential terminology for you here. So here we see theme. So what is a theme? A theme is a form built using a specific model type. Sometimes clients refer to the themes as applications, forms, or cards. For example, an organization can have multiple themes for grant requests or applications under this model type. Or an organization may have multiple themes of reports, but they would all be under one model type which in that case would be request reports. We use themes to distinguish between different forms within the same model type or card. Now you'll see below this theme that there are other tabs that are indented here. These tabs are views of a theme. A view is a representation of a specific theme. There should only be one view active at a time. In the current form builder that you see here, which is on stencils, the ability to create separate views is only used when you want to experiment with two different variations of the same form, with the same fields and configuration, and then activate the one you would like. Now, notice that there are two cogwheels next to both the theme 
and the view. The first cogwheel has settings for the model type. The second cogwheel is for the views. By clicking on the first cogwheel, you'll see a, model pop, a modal pop-up. Excuse me. Here you can see the name of the theme. You can change the name here at any time, and you can change its label. The label is different from the name. The name that you give a theme is the site-wide name. The label that you put here will show up as an option for a quick link. And now let me go ahead and remind you what a quick link is. Quick links are located at the bottom of your dashboard. They are these blue icons. Now if you scroll over, let's say, this grant request quick link, you will see that a menu will appear listing all of the grant request themes available to you according to their labels. Note that you can make the label and the name the same on your forms to make it easier. So let's go get, let's get back to the admin panel. Now see here there are two collapsed menus. Let's go ahead and go into advanced settings. You'll see there are a lot of settings here. Let me go ahead and go over the limit visibility by user profile checkbox. This checkbox will limit who can see this form here. So if you click on this, a list of profiles will show up. This way, you can select who can see the form. We highly recommend that you do not check this box, as you can limit visibility within the form itself. So let's go ahead and uncheck this for now. Below this, you will see a list labeled Categories. Here, there are two items I can select. The FIP request and the grant request. Selecting one of these over the other signifies the type of request you intend this thing to be. Each has their own required fields. So let's say that we want this theme to be a FIP request. A FIP is an internal request, and it only operates using invoicing system, and there are no reports required. It is used for consultants, events, and meetings. Those are just a few examples. Although an amount may be allocated for, let's say, an event, the final payment card is created after the invoice is received. Now, this differs from a grant request. A grant request is a standard grant or transaction and is used almost for all forms. Using a grant request will have you be able to decide when the funding is awarded, the number of payments and the number of reports are required, and other things. You do not pay by invoice, and report, reports are almost always required. So let's go ahead and look at this below. These are the enable and disable date boxes. This allows you to have the form accessible to users for a specific range of time. Let's say you open the form today, but want there to only be a time period of two months for people to apply for this specific grant. You can configure when a form is visible to grantees here. You can also prepare a message that displays if someone applies after the date, right here, where it says disabled text. Now let's look at the second collapsed menu, which is program mapping. Here, you can map this card, or this theme specifically, to a funding program, a sub-program, an initiative, or a sub-initiative. Note that you can only map to one program, or one sub-program, or one initiative budget. Once we select a program here, let's say, right beginning, there will only be the sub-programs associated with this program available to you to select. So let's go ahead and X out of here. Let's look at the second cogwheel next to the view. These three buttons here toggle visibility. And also note that you can name the view as well under the theme. You can name it whatever you'd like. But let's talk about the visibility. Here you will see edit, list, and detail. 
So let's go ahead and click on List. Notice that the button is shadowed and the icon of the eye is closed rather than open as it is on the other ones. This means that this view is not visible in List View or the list of records on this grant request card. So let's go ahead and make it visible again. Below this dashed line, you will see a series of checkboxes next to user profiles. A caveat here, these are specific to custom profiles that you configure in the admin panel, and this can severely limit who can see this view of this theme. Again, you can go ahead and configure who can view things um, on the form itself. So, we've looked at themes and views under the grant request card, but what about home pages or landing pages of text for grantees and reviewers? You might wonder what your grantees will see as soon as they log into their portal. This is not actually configured in any of the standard model types like grant request or grant, but rather in generic templates. So let's locate and enter that. Here's generic templates. This is where you can build pages, like a welcome page, directions on how to navigate the site, and descriptions of grants. You can build pages that are not meant to be interacted with, like grant requests or other forms are by your users. This prevents the forms you build from becoming cluttered with additional text. This is especially useful for grants that are particularly complicated and that you would like the grantee to go ahead and read about before applying. Now let's go ahead and get back to our grant request form. So let's look at the bulk of the page here in the middle. This is called preview mode. As it implies, you can see what is built into the form here. Let's take a look at the top portion of the preview mode window here. This is a dropdown of profiles. This enables you to preview the form as a specific profile. So as you can see, I can see this form as a grantee, as an employee, or any other user profile available to me on my site. Now to the right of this dropdown is another. This is the view type dropdown. Here you can view the form in its edit view, list view, and detail view. Right now, we are previewing the form in edit view. Notice that you cannot interact with the form. If I try to type something, there will be an error here that says interaction is disabled. You would be able to interact with the, car with the form itself on your dashboard in the grant request card. Now this is because we are merely in preview mode, only checking on whether the form is configured and set up as we would like it to be and seen by your users. Now let's go ahead and see what the list view looks like. Notice that it's not a form, but the relevant pieces of information about this form. This is what appears in the list of records on the grant request card. This is built here, just as the form itself is. Now let's look at detail view. Notice that there are no longer any edit editable fields and the form appears as it does after one enters in information into the editable version of this form. This is how the form appears after information has been inputted and saved. Now let's look at these icons over here to the right. This is the print icon. You can print this form in any of the three view types I just showed you, list, edit, and detail. Once you've selected which form you'd like to print, let's say I want to print the edit view, so we'll go back to the view type dropdown, click on edit, let it load, and then click on print. Another window will pop up here automatically and you can now see that the form is in a readily printable format. The icon to the right of print is the import icon. By clicking this button, we can import other themes of the same model type. 
This saves you the hassle of building another theme from scratch. A warning here, if you import to the wrong place, let's say you are trying to import a workflow into the wrong form, this can make your site crash. This feature has to be used deliberately and intentionally, otherwise there are safer ways to build from a template. This is the export icon. This will download a file of the code utilized by our system. This is not a typically used feature in, the build, in building a form, but it is available for our more advanced users of our system. Now let's go ahead and go behind the curtain of preview mode. This is the builder icon, which will take you to the form builder. Let's go ahead and enter the builder for this form. As you can see, there are plenty of things going on here. At the top left, you will see a switch to go between draft and active. Active indicates that this form is what is seen by users. Draft makes it so that this form is not yet visible or usable by your users. Over to the right, you can see the preview icon. Clicking on this will return you to preview mode. Always make sure that any changes you make in the form builder are saved, or else your changes will be lost upon re-entering preview mode. So look at, let's look at these bars right here in the form builder. These are the form elements. These are what are used to build forms. Notice that there are different colors to the right edge of each element. And each color indicates a different type of element. Let's look at a table to define each element and its associated color. The first I'd like to go over is the component element. These are light pink in color over to the right edge of the element. These are pre-programmed elements. This means that they are hard-coded and cannot be changed in the form builder or by you. The next is the field element. These are blue. These allow you to put in either core or dynamic values. Core fields are system-wide and dynamic fields are specific to the site you are on and created by you in your admin panel. The group element is green, and these allow you to group elements to ease dragging and dropping for organization. If you have a set of related elements that you'd like to move all together, the group element can facilitate this. The next is the spacer element, which is gray. This allows you to add one to 10 blank lines of space within your form. So in preview mode, let's say you have two com two component elements that are too close to each other, you can go ahead and add a spacer between those to make it more aesthetically pleasing. The next is the image element. These are neon pink. These allow you to add an image to your page. Now, a caveat, these can't be resized in the image component itself. If you'd like to have an image that you can resize in the form builder, we recommend using a text element which are yellow. These allow you to enter titles, headings, directions. You can also use HTML code here to further format the element itself. You can add tables, and like I had said, you can add an image in a text element. And lastly, calculated field elements. These are white. These allow you to calculate two or more fields using a simple calculation such as adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, and these are called roll-up calculations. These allow you to calculate from one card to another. Now let's go ahead and get back to our form builder. Notice to the right of these elements that there is a list of what looks like miniature versions of the elements. And that's exactly what they are. This is a way to navigate from element to element within your form without scrolling through the entire form builder. 
This is particularly useful in longer forms. To the right of this, we'll notice that there are four tabs. The first of the four tabs is the Attributes tab. This differs for each element. What stays the same is the ability to choose the kind and type. So let's go ahead and add a new element to show you what I mean. Now we can select a kind. Let's go ahead and say I want a component element. Select component under kind, and we can now select the type of component we want here. The other consistent attribute is the copy element dropdown, and that's below everything here. It's usually at the bottom. By clicking on this, you can copy the setup of another existing element in another theme. This is particularly useful for a complicated element, let's say a budgeting table, so you don't have to set it up from scratch. Now, notice that the second tab is grayed out and unavailable. This is the values tab, which is only available for specific kinds and types of elements. For example, a select field in which a user can select multiple answers from a set of answers to a question on your form. The values would be configured here. Now let's go on to the next tab. This is the visibility tab. This tab will allow you to toggle the visibility of this specific element. Again, you can make this element visible in one of these three view types, list, edit, or detail. You can also toggle this directly on the element itself here to the right hand side of the element in the same order, list, detail, and edit. Now below this we will see there are, there's a series of selecting boxes. The first is the show only when in states visibility configuration. You can make this element visible in a specific state if you'd like. For example, let's say you only want this element available in draft state. You can configure that here by selecting draft over to the left and clicking the right arrow here. Notice that if you do not select anything to be moved over to the rightmost box here, the form will be shown in all states to the left. This is the standard configuration, and only once you move one of the items in the left box to the right box will you trigger the element to be shown in specific states. The next list is the Can See Visibility Configuration. This is very similar to the Show Only When in States Visibility Configuration, such that the standard configuration will only change once you begin moving items from this left box to the right. Here you can select which users with specific profiles can view this element. Let's say we only want employees to see this element. You can select employees on the left and again move it over to the right. You can also add conditional logic to any element here this blue box. You can make conditions as to when this element is visible to a user. Let's say you only want an element to show during a certain period of time. You can configure that here. Lastly, this is the styling tab. Here, you can even further alter the aesthetics of how this element appears on the form. As you can see, you can alter the margins, the padding, you can add borders, you can change the width, and even the alignment of this element on the form, left, right, or center. You can also change the color on certain elements. The default styling of the elements are for the most part ready to go, so this is rarely utilized. 
This concludes today's webinar on the basic functionality of the form builder. And I hope you enjoyed it. If there are any features I did not cover extensively, like the elements in the form builder, we will be hosting trainings in the future to address these features. You may also learn about any of these features by visiting our knowledge base. Now let's go ahead and open it up to questions. Okay, so it looks like we have a couple here. Now what happens if I accidentally make a change to an element? Does it save automatically? So the short answer is no, it does not. So let's go ahead and go back to the form builder. You'll see at the bottom of the four tabs here, over to the right hand side, that there is a cancel and a save button at the very bottom. If you'd like to go ahead and discard the changes that you made to any existing element, simply click delete or cancel. If this is a new element that you've created, like the one that I have here, and you've set it up correctly, you can either delete the changes that you made, or let's say that you want to go ahead and use this element still, you can click save, and then make ch any changes to that element after the fact. Keep in mind that you cannot change the kind and the element, or the kind and the type of the element once changes are saved for certain elements. Okay, let's see. We have another question. Okay. So, what is the difference between changing the visibility on the cogwheel and in the form itself? So we saw a bunch of places to change visibility, and that can get really confusing. For the cogwheel, over by view, we saw that we can go ahead and configure visibility over here. This will change the visibility of the entire view. Whereas configuring visibility in the visibility tab will affect only the visibility of that particular element. So clicking on any of these will affect only this element that I'm on, not the entire form. Okay. So have any more questions? All right. Looks like we have a couple more. So what if I create a theme that I don't want to keep? How do I delete it? You can go ahead and delete a theme, but only if you are absolutely certain you do not want this theme. It can't be recovered after you've deleted it. You can do this by going to the cogwheel by the theme. And then here at the bottom left, you'll see delete. Now once you click delete, you'll see an, a message pop up asking you if you're absolutely sure that you'd like to delete this. And I don't, so I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel. All right, a couple more. All right, so what if I have two grants that are very similar, but only differ slightly? Do I make two views of the same grant? So, as I had said earlier, we, all, we advise that you only have one view active, and one way of doing that is making sure that you only have one view per theme. Having more than one view can create a bunch of difficulties in knowing which should be active, or which one was the experimental one, and having more than one view active, which can occur, could cause problems for your users. The best thing to do in this particular situation in which you have two grants that are very similar but only differ slightly is to create a new theme altogether. You can go ahead and do that by clicking on New Theme. You'll see this menu pop up again, but it'll be completely blank. You can name it, and then you can label it, and you can also clone from an existing view. So instead of setting up a new theme from scratch, you can go ahead and and clone the one that you think is similar and start building off of that one. After you're done, you can click Save, and the new form will pop up. And we have another question. 
where can we save documents that we want grantees to download? Is that in the generic template? Now that's actually going to be in a different place. You can see here that you can configure different documents under card documents. Let's say that you want to go ahead and add a document. You can do that here. So that's actually not in the form builder. If you have any specific questions regarding how to configure documents that you want grantees to download, please go ahead and contact us at support and we'd love to help you with that. So for any information that I might not have covered or you'd like to know more about, please visit our knowledge base at flux.io slash knowledge. You can also please contact us at support. We'd love to help you with any questions that you have that might not have been addressed here. And we're going to go ahead and call it for today. You'll also be able to find the video recordings of, these web of this webinar and other webinars and any other Q&A on our knowledge base. Just as a reminder of what we went over today, we learned what the standard model types are in Flux, what themes are under each model type, the advanced settings for each theme, how to make changes to portal pages like the grantee or reviewer landing pages, and any settings unique to the preview and builder modes, and what elements make up a form. Thanks again for joining us today, and we hope to host you again at our next training. Have a great day.